The best restaurants have a soul and culture of their own, creating a unique space and time. We can all remember some fantastic food joint that touched our lives and then one day was gone forever. Would it be weird to wish for a time machine to just go back to grab a quick lunch somewhere amazing? Here are some options for your culinary journeys into the past. New York City's Carnegie Deli in the 1970s, everything changed for the deli across from Carnegie Hall when a reviewer for the New York Times claimed it served the best pastrami in the city. Patrons flocked to Carnegie Deli and by the time it appeared in Woody Allen's 1984 film Broadway Danny Rose, it was considered a New York institution. The deli served ludicrously large sandwiches and embraced its touristy image over the years. According to the New York Times, things went south for the iconic deli in 2015 when it was shut down for 10 months after utility workers discovered it was stealing gas. Subsequently, a court ordered the restaurant pay over $2 million in back wages to the staff. Soon after, owner Marianne Harper went through a messy divorce with her husband, who allegedly stole the recipes for their pastrami and cheesecake and shared them with his mistress. New York's Carnegie Deli closed for good in December 2016. WD-50 when Wiley Dufresne opened WD-50 in 2003, he described his menu as American cuisine, but was dedicated to pushing the boundaries of cutting-edge cuisine. According to the New York Times, the team at WD-50 often worked from stray musings from Dufresne's food journal, like, can you braise couscous in coffee milk? What comes out when you put wine through a dehydrator? His menu only listed ingredients, with no indication of how the meal was prepared, leading to appetizers like butternut squash, sherbet, earl grey, tapioca. According to Vanity Fair, one of the most iconic dishes was his extremely popular Eggs Benedict, dubbed the restaurant's Stairway to Heaven. After 11 years of offering truly unique experiences, the restaurant was sadly forced to close in 2014 when the building owner sold to a developer who wished to place a new building on the site. For the time being, to try WD-50's iconic and confusing food, you'll need to track down a copy of Dufresne's cookbook. El Bouilly after returning from his military service in 1987, Ferran Adria became head chef at an isolated Barcelona restaurant, El Bouilly. There, he embarked on a cooking philosophy defined by the adage, creativity means not copying. According to Vanity Fair, Adria was proclaimed the best chef on the planet by acclaimed chef Joel Robuchon, and the restaurant became highly sought after. At the height of its popularity, El Bouilly was said to receive over a million reservation requests, with only 8,000 lucky souls getting a table. The restaurant was closed in 2011, reflecting Adria's desire to focus on culinary experiments without the difficulties of satisfying customers at the same time. Many of his innovations have been copied the world over, which only makes you wonder what secrets are hiding in El Bouilly today. Pith. After cooking for his roommates, Columbia University senior Jonah Ryder decided to open his own restaurant, Pith, in his dorm room with an online sign-up sheet and low expectations. Pith was featured in a student newspaper article that went viral, and soon the news had reached the mainstream media. He found himself fully booked for months on end, far longer than he could possibly fulfill. He even appeared on The Late Show to feed Stephen Colbert leftovers. What um, does the school think of this? They have been less than pleased. According to Splinter, Ryder only charged for the cost of ingredients, but the powers that be in the on-campus housing were not pleased, and in May 2016, his lease at the dormitory was terminated. So there's no hope for those wanting to try his multi-course meals in a dorm room, but Ryder did manage to get a gig at Chicago restaurant Intro, where he continued to hold his communal supper clubs. Chasen's Dave Chasen was a Broadway actor and vaudeville comedian who moved up to L.A. to make it big. He didn't, but his cooking was a success, so in 1936 he opened a restaurant serving chili and ribs to the starlets and shakers of Hollywood. According to the Paul Revere Williams Project, Chasen later expanded the menu after director Frank Capra complained of having to eat chili and ribs all the time. The Hollywood elite were attracted to the private, club-like atmosphere of Chasen's, and even J. Edgar Hoover frequented the restaurant, which was off-limits to the press. The restaurant famously accepted no credit cards. Well-known patrons could simply have the bills sent to their house. According to Cruise Line History, there are countless fascinating stories from Chasen's, which may or may not be true. Alfred Hitchcock regularly falling asleep at his table, Ronald Reagan proposing to Nancy, Donna Summer writing she works hard for the money after hearing the line from the bathroom attendant. After Chasen passed away in 1973, his wife Maude carried on, attracting newer stars like Sharon Stone, John Travolta, and Quentin Tarantino until the final closure in 1990. Thanks for watching. Click the mashed icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.